Today is World Hijab Day, a day in which non-Muslim women are encouraged to don the hijab so that they can understand how wonderful it is. As a man, I felt left out, so I figured, why not make it World Hijab slash Kufi Day? Muslims, you brought this on yourselves. I've been talking about Islam for years, and I doubt you've ever heard me criticize the hijab. Why? Because people from different religious backgrounds and different cultures have different customs, especially when it comes to attire. Jewish men wear yarmulkes. Many Hindus wear bindis, the dot in the center of the forehead. I have occasionally criticized the burqa, because putting on a Frumpy ninja costume seems especially degrading and dehumanizing, but I've never been bothered by a woman covering her hair with a scarf. However, when we get to World Hijab Day, I have to point out the inconsistency and hypocrisy. Check out this tweet from Muslim Voices. Nazma Khan, who immigrated to the U.S. from Bangladesh at age 11, faced years of shaming over wearing a headscarf in New York. So, in 2013, she started World Hijab Day, a day for both Muslim and non-Muslim women to experience wearing a headscarf. I'm going to call bull on the claim that Nazma Khan was shamed for years in New York for wearing the hijab. New York is one of the most pro-Muslim places on the planet. You can literally destroy skyscrapers in the name of Islam, and they'll respond with an Islam Day parade right down the middle of Manhattan. I'd be a bit more open to charges of rampant anti-Muslim persecution if so many of them didn't turn out to be fabricated. Muslims, if you don't understand why endlessly fabricating stories about harassment would make me suspicious of your claims, grab a copy of Aesop's Fables at your local library and look up The Boy Who Cried Wolf. It's number 210. But let's ignore that and pretend that Muslim women are routinely harassed and bullied for wearing a hijab in places like New York. What's the reasoning behind World Hijab Day? Well, since Muslim women are being harassed and bullied for wearing the hijab, non-Muslim women should put on the hijab to show solidarity with Muslim women. Okay, so if certain women are harassed and bullied for what they wear, other women should enter into their world by dressing the same way they dress. Got it? Good. Now, how do we know that World Hijab Day isn't really about helping women, but is instead yet another attempt at imposing Islamic standards of morality on non-Muslims? We know it because we can easily test the sincerity of the organizers and participants. Muslim women who choose not to wear the hijab and Muslim women who leave Islam and remove the hijab are harassed and bullied by Muslims. Yesterday, the apostate prophet posted a video clip of former Muslim Yasmin Muhammad, who describes her experience with the hijab. I was born and raised in Canada, and the hijab was forced on me at the age of nine. And from that moment on, I was no longer allowed to play on the monkey bars, go swimming, ride a bike, do any of the fun things that children do that I still wanted to do. All of a sudden I was told from now on you have to cover yourself every inch of your body except for your face and hands and you are to be a wrapped up clean candy as opposed to a dirty candy that is unwrapped and covered in flies and dirt. When I got older I wanted to remove the hijab. When my family found out about this desire of mine, they threatened to kill me, and then they disowned me. And that's here in Canada. So you can just imagine how much harder it is for women in countries like Saudi Arabia and Iran and other Muslim-majority countries. There's a link to the full video in the comments section. Recently, a Muslim fashion blogger named Dina Tokyo, who spent years wearing the hijab, decided not to. How did her fellow Muslims react? Dina shared some of the comments she received from Muslims on her YouTube page. Here are a few, and by the way, graphic language warning. Slowly you will be a porn star. Dina didn't get banged enough when she was young. Now she's opening up sexually. 
Ah, uh, I've seen this too many times. Dog. I hope you and your family all die painfully and slowly. Absolute disgrace. Disgusting. Dina looks like an old witch. She has aged. She a fat whore with a grommet nose. You took the hijab off. Now you're doing horse riding. Next step, sure, would be... <laughs> Next step, sure, would be... Riding or being a porn star, plus the English accent is awful to hear. Dina Tokyo, you are toxic. Fire of hell is waiting for you. F off. You are a hoe. You're a d showing people your hair is a bad idea. Stupid hoe. One hijab down, two more to go, eh? Then top gonna be off. We're gonna see her boobies and later her butt. Please can you die soon? The world would be a better place. Scumbag. Dina, now that your hijab is fully off, will you be modelling some bikinis and thongs too? Or making a podcast in the bedroom with Sydney? Candy cane, she is Satan in disguise. She's a tramp wearing anything. Put crotchless leggings with label, she would wear it. She took her hijab off to be in hell with her sister and mom. You're a disgusting hunk of a person. <laughs> you a hoe. You look trash without your hijab. The kuffar bum lickers. All the girls in hijabs followed Dina. Following Dina have officially been classed as hojabbies. Dina Tokyo, you're just a worthless loser scum of a person. Dina, you're a slag and your husband is a for letting you take off hijab, you care for. Undercover care for slag. Your husband's a useless as well. Get lost, you dirty, immoral, indecency, haram promoting garbage. You and your dirty husband get lost. You ugly ugly You are a devil, Dina. May you be cursed. You are both rats, f*** you. You disgusting, degenerate piece of garbage. Disgusting piece of prostitute. Hmm, my mum doesn't sell herself, lol. Dina does anything for money. Not sure how many she's sucked for fame or money. You slag. Sid actually has a He has a and he's the one that gave birth to the two. <gasps> That's terrible. You look like a crack junk. Is this Dina a crackhead? Dirty careful dog, may you and Sid burn in hell for all eternity. You're gross. Careful whore. <laughs> on the heat, that's why she got to take her clothing off one by one. Um, Dina, you literally look like a crackhead without the hijab. She'll have her <laughs> and fanny out next. <laughs> Cow. You whore, you abandon the dean for Dunya. Jehil. <laughs> next wear shorts and then become a Christian. <laughs> you look like you're on drugs. Filthy pig hired by Zionist as a false Muslim whore. <laughs> yourself, <laughs> your day will come. Hoes will be hoes, bro. <sighs> we will see Dina soon in bikini and she will justify it as well, unsubscribed. Women are whores by nature, religious or not. You just have different level of whoredom. Fake Muslim, <laughs> I hope you die. This woman is a devil. No more, ho no more hojabi, just a ho, lol. Stupid female. The jails woman. May Allah destroy you too, you Arab whore. You deserve hell, little slut. Most of these comments, everyone's just showing their true colors in most of these comments. She goes on and on with these comments for nearly 48 minutes. The full video, once again, is in my pinned comment. So what have we learned about the hijab? We've learned that there's massive psychological pressure on Muslim women to wear the hijab. Muslim women who choose not to wear the hijab are harassed and bullied for not conforming. They're called sluts. They're called slags. They're called whores. They're called garbage. They're called pigs. They're called cows. They're called hypocrites. They're called devils. They're called kuffar. They're told that they must want to be porn stars. Curses are called down on them. Death and destruction are wished upon them. Remind me, when women are showered with abuse over their fashion choices, what are other women supposed to do as a sign of solidarity? They're supposed to dress in the same manner, right? So if the Muslims who called for a World Hijab Day are sincere, shouldn't they call for a day where Muslim women strip off their hijabs to show their solidarity with women who are abused for not wearing the hijab? Of course they should. But they don't. Instead, the Islamists who tell gullible non-Muslim women to wear the hijab are the same Islamists who heap abuse on Muslim women who refuse to wear the hijab. They're the primary abusers in all of this. 
So World Head Job Day isn't about helping bullied women. It's about spreading Islam. Here's how this works. If you tell a thousand Western women to convert to Islam, you probably won't get any converts. But if you tell a thousand Western women that they need to show their support for harassed and bullied Muslim women by wearing the hijab for a day, quite a few of them will be happy to participate. The women who put on the hijab are going to get some attention for wearing it. They're going to hear, it's so cool that you're helping Muslim women. You're so brave. You're so woke. And some women really like this kind of attention. Now, if anyone ends up criticizing these women for putting on a hijab, well, that's even better. Because now these lily-white Western women get to be victims. And for leftists, the greatest thing you can aspire to be in life is a victim. What were they before they wrapped a hijab around their heads? They were privileged white women. What did the hijab help them become? An oppressed minority. These are the women who will convert to Islam so that they can go on getting the attention they crave and feeling like they're victims. They're the same women we'll see on YouTube two months from now, telling the world that the hijab is empowering and that it changed their lives. What a way to spread a religion. But there's another issue here. If people who don't believe in Muhammad are being encouraged to dress up like Muslims, why not go all the way? Why not have a day or even an entire month where non-Muslims obey Islam's commands about how to go to the bathroom and how to eat and how to treat people who don't agree with you? Why stop at the hijab when we can go full Sharia? Come to think of it, that's already been done. Last year, three devout atheists decided to obey the commands of Allah and Muhammad for 30 days to see how it would affect them mentally and physically. Their adventures were recorded in an epic series called Islamicize Me. I invite everyone to watch the series. If you watch the entire journey and you still think that obeying Allah and Muhammad is a good idea, I'll put on a hijab.